Welcome to the Nobody Guide to Life, where we provide tips and tools for personal growth, personal development, and your spiritual journey that you can use right now in your everyday life. I'm J.A. Plosker. You can always find out more at the nobodyguidetolife.com. Thank you for joining us. Over the next few months, I'll be releasing full bonus episodes off of our regular Sunday schedule every once in a while. This episode starts it off, so keep an eye out for more shows. And I'd just like to say as we approach the holiday of Thanksgiving in the U.S. Thank you so much to all of you around the world who listen to the Nobody Guide to Life, who share these episodes with others. It really means the world, and it keeps keeps me making shows that bring you tips and tools to help you on your journeys of personal and spiritual growth. So I'm, I'm just humbled and inspired by your support. So thank you very, very much. So we get caught up in life. We get busy. And holidays are natural stopping points. If we get carried away as the days and weeks fly by, holidays give us an excuse to rest and, and catch up. Sometimes it's a religious holiday, sometimes secular. Sometimes we honor someone or something or a cause. But at other times, it's just a day to remember ourselves. But whatever the case, we usually look forward to them and we usually need them. I know, I know I do. And if nothing else, they're a reminder of how important it is to stop and reflect every once in a while. One of my favorite holidays is Thanksgiving. I think it's, I think it's probably the food. Well, okay, anyone who knows me knows that it's definitely the food. There's, there's nothing like turkey stuffing and pie to really make a day special. And there's nothing like leftover turkey stuffing and pie to make the next day special. And sometimes the day after that. Too many more days and the turkey and stuffing are probably not safe to eat, but you know what? You can use your own judgment when it comes to the pie. So I love the Thanksgiving time of year. The final days of November when that pleasant crispness of fall hasn't really left us and the darkness of winter hasn't yet arrived. It's a, it's a period of limbo in so many ways. And gathering for a festive meal always seems like a perfect transition into the final month of the year into December. And so for the last few Thanksgivings, I've taken some time to really reflect on the things in my life that I'm grateful for. You know, I don't mean just saying a casual thank you to the powers that be before digging into a pile of potatoes. I mean, an honest to goodness inner reflection on days past. There was a time when that was really difficult for me. I had such a hard time seeing through a veil of a real upset or, well, upset that was real enough to me. And we all have things in our lives that get us down, that weigh on us, that follow us around. And I'm no different. My internal life for so many years was a struggle in so many ways. And, you know, frankly, so is my external world. And I guess in one way of thinking, my outer world had come to reflect my inner emotion. So it's, it's funny how that happens. So you've gone through this, I'm sure. Maybe you're going through it now. The holidays bring up things for so many of us. Either way, you know what I'm talking about. If you're on your own conscious journey of personal and spiritual growth, you likely know what happens when you ask a higher power, the universe, whatever your conception of that energy is, for help in a certain area of life. You get tested. So it's my belief that the universe, or whatever you want to call it, brings us the people and events we need to help us grow. But of course, to know if we're making progress, we need real tests, real experiences. If we just had a smooth road with no valleys, hills, or, or no change in scenery, how would we know if we've changed? How could we gauge the changing landscape around us? What would be our marker of progress? How would we measure success if, I don't know, if, if, if success is even something we can even measure out here on this journey? So that's the double-edged sword of, of personal and spiritual growth, right? We're in a struggle and we want help. So maybe we enter prayer or we visualize the life we want and decide that that's what we want to commit to. We set a goal and want to achieve it. And we ask for some kind of, I, maybe it's divine help or, or however we define that. But that help will often come in the form of 
a pill even more bitter than the one we're, we're currently trying to swallow in our lives. If we want to be more patient, maybe we'll be presented with situations that test the limits of our patience. If we want to bring healthier relationships into our lives, some of our current relationships may become strained to teach us about what or who we really want in our lives. If we want to be drawn closer to some conception of the ultimate or a god or gods, then we may be presented with trials that will test just how serious we are about our faith in both times of joy and times of distress. Look, it's easy to be patient when the traffic is flowing on the freeway, right? It's easy to be in love when, it, when a partnership is new and mysterious. Or it's easy to be filled with faith when times are good and money and health are flowing. The real test of commitment to a path of change and growth is how we handle the difficult times. The problem, of course, is that when we face the trials of life that can help us grow and flourish, we tend to forget why, in some sense, we brought them into our lives. And instead, we see trials as an inconvenience or an obstacle to happiness instead of potential building blocks for greater joy. So many times we just want to get it over with or move on from difficulties without really stopping to consider what their purpose is in our lives. But you know, I've talked to so many people out there on the road of personal and spiritual growth, and I've learned something about life's difficulties from their stories and my own. Often it's the struggles we don't want that so often end up being what we're most thankful for when we see them in our rearview mirror as we grow and move on down the road. Look, I know there have been a gazillion songs written about this and a gazillion and one bumper stickers and t-shirts made about it, but it's such an important point. It's such an important sentiment that we can't hear or see it enough. It's the things we often resist the hardest that we need the most. If there's a difficult relationship that no longer serves you, but you're afraid to leave it, that's an example of resistance to change or a resistance to the emotions that are signaling a need for change. It can be hard to find the courage or energy to leave because staying is so comfortable. But maybe taking that difficult first step out the door is what will open up worlds of possibility. It can be hard to leave a job that is sucking the life from you and it can be scary to pack up your desk. But maybe leaving that cubicle behind and taking a new direction in your career is just the first step to finding a fulfilling work life. Resistance to change is what prevents change in life. So nothing is more important than tuning into what you're feeling right now, being thankful for the message you're receiving about a situation, and taking a step in a new direction, especially if you've been asking or praying for signs to light the path to change. Sometimes those signs are subtle and require you to pay close attention. See, opportunities don't always knock loudly. Sometimes they tap quietly on the door, hoping you'll hear. This is another place where one of our favorite topics, mindfulness, can be of so much help to us. It's by being fully present in this moment and paying attention to what's in front of you that you can hear or see the guidance you've been asking for. Look, it's fine to ask for change in life from whatever conception of deity or energy you choose, but it's then even more important to be present for your life in all of its aspects so that you can be in tune to the guidance you receive. If you give your full attention to a relationship, stay centered with your partner and focus when he or she is acting out or reacting instead of being swept away in tides of shifting emotion, you can make clearer choices about what direction you want the relationship to take. In other words, remaining present for a relationship as it unfolds can help you decide if the difficult dynamics are something you can work through or if the effects on you necessitate a change. And you make that in a place of calm, in a place of peace. If you give your full presence to work while you're at work, you can better assess how it makes you feel, and gauge its effect on your life. Is it really the job you dislike or an individual in the workplace? If it's the job, it may be a time for a change. If it's just one person, 
Well, look, then I have news for you. That person will still be there at your next job. You know, he or she may be wearing different clothes and have a different name and drive a different car, but they'll be there. But if you don't stay present and get in touch with the moment, you'll only make decisions as reactions. And that's not really the best way to bring change. When we grow still and focused in our lives and stay mindful of the moments as they arise and pass, we're better able to appreciate life situations as opportunities to grow instead of excuses to surf tides of frantic emotion. We repeat patterns of negative behavior because we repeat reactions to emotional stimuli. Once we break the pattern of reaction, we can better express gratitude for difficult moments because they become signs and symbols of change instead of triggers for destructive reaction. And that's the key to finding gratitude, even in the darkest of times. See, if we're clearer and more present in any situation, we're better able to notice the gifts of the moment. And that can lead to powerful aha moments that we, we never knew were possible. Awareness of the moment can help us make a different choice about the foods we eat, the people we hang out with, or the job we go to. And suddenly, well, life looks different from that place. What was once such a huge problem or an insurmountable obstacle that seemed like it would never end can become a tool that, I don't know, prompts us to change. It, it can urge us to assess, plan, and move forward a little wiser. We start to see challenges more as opportunities to focus and less as opportunities to retreat into what's safe and comfortable. So do you, do you see that connection? Please don't miss it. When we ask for change in our lives, we'll be tested in ways that will urge us and challenge us to change. We often forget that the events of this moment are the very moments that, if we just pay attention to them, can help us move and grow in ways we never imagined. The mindful approach to life, being present and aware in this moment, can help us reframe difficulties into opportunities to be present for the change that we're seeking. And the result of that, instead of looking ahead to those moments in the future when things will be better or those things I'll have someday that will make me happy, I stand in the reality of now just as it is for whatever it has to offer. This moment, these things, I become grateful for the opportunities happening right now and for whatever they can teach me. I don't run from challenge, but I stand in it. I pay attention to it. I embrace it as a chance to step into the life I asked for. So make a new commitment today. A commitment that that may just push you so far out of your comfort zone, you find yourself in a whole new place. Here's an exercise you can try. First, take a seat or lie down. Do whatever you want. Just get comfortable. Take a deep breath in through your nose. Now let it out through your mouth. Now take in another deep breath and let it out. All right, feel yourself melting into the moment without judgment, without criticism. Let your body sink into wherever you are, the chair, the bed, the floor. Now release the tension in your face and jaw that you didn't even know was there. Now become conscious of your normal breath, just in, out, in, out. Feel how your breath enters your nose, feel how it leaves. Now picture yourself in a situation that you want a state you want to be in that requires change. You have something in mind? It could be a state of health or wealth, whatever you want. Hold that vision for a moment and see it clearly. Every detail. Use all your senses. Manifest that vision clearly in your mind of the state you want. Now, let that vision dissolve and come back to this moment, this moment, these things. And say, and you can use your own words, I'm thankful for now and all of its gifts because I know this is the road I need. Don't misunderstand the point of this. 
and think that I'm saying that pain is something to be minimized. Don't believe that mindfulness and gratitude are here to diminish the obstacles and difficulties that we all face in this life. Nothing about struggle is easy. No obstacle will crumble in the face of, of a simple wish. But the struggles and the obstacles will eventually yield to a life lived in the moment. Self-control and presence in the moment paired with gratitude for the lessons of the now can eventually lead you to a place of calm perspective that may just alter the way you perceive life, however it appears in front of and around you. So this Thanksgiving, whether you celebrate or not, reflect on the idea of being grateful and thankful for whatever is in your life. This moment, these things, it's not all sunshine and roses for sure, but no one's life is. There are so many difficult things happening in the world, and it can be hard to keep our energy and spirits high or keep a spirit of thanksgiving when there's so much suffering all around. But the best way to help the world, to heal the world, is to start with ourselves. And that begins with appreciating whatever we have in our lives right now. Be mindful of the moment. Love it for what it can teach you without judgment and start the work of being present. The tools for the change you're seeking are right in the life you're living. And they can be found right in this moment that's happening right in these things around you. That brings us to the end of this episode of The Nobody Guide to Life. Thank you so much for being with us and for staying with us through all these episodes. And you can always check out more episodes at thenobodyguidetolife.com. Reach out to us on Twitter and Facebook at Nobody's View. And now we're just getting started on Instagram at J.A. Plosker. Or join the Facebook community, Simple Spirituality. If you liked what you heard on this episode, please consider leaving us a review. Please consider sharing it with someone you know who might really need it. Keep practicing and have a good week.